what the heck happened with the Pistons and Monty Williams, Vincent? What happened? Well, on Juneteenth, a black man got his freedom. <laughs> the way I saw it yesterday, he got a sixty million dollar check to go away. Wow. Rich, I know you can't say that, but I can. That's fine, right? I just think it was a bad fit. Realistically, it was a bad fit at a bad time. Like Monty Williams is a head coach for a veteran team. This was a young team that needed a younger coach and young patience, and they needed more guidance there. And although the talent wasn't up to par, like you have so many players under the age of 25, Kay Cunningham is the one bona fide player on that roster. It just didn't seem to fit. And when you have a 28-game losing streak that starts on the third game of the regular season and doesn't end until like late December or January, whenever it was, it was like a national nightmare. Clearly, there was a disconnect between Monty in the front office and the front office with itself. Like I wrote for Yahoo Sports yesterday that there's four factions inside that Pistons building, which is not uncommon in NBA circles. It's just a matter of, can you all get on the same page? They clearly were not on the same page. The Pistons offered Monty Williams a boatload of money to come there after he said, no, now, Rich, you're married. I'm not. Mm. My mother told me. If you ask a woman on a date once and she says no, don't come back and ask her a second and a third time. She's going to say no again. The Pistons kept coming to Monty Williams with more and more money until he said yes. That should have been the sign for both parties that this was not going to be a, a fruitful marriage. But for Monty Williams, you probably have coaches around the league telling him, you got to take this job because it benefits the rest of us. You saw after Monty signed that deal, Popovich got a big deal. Ty Lue got a big deal. Steve Kerr got a big deal. All these coaches benefited from the Monty Williams stimulus package. So it was almost like he had to take the deal, except it didn't seem like his heart was all the way in it. I didn't think he was a good coach this year for this type of team. I still think he is a good coach. He was just a good coach who had a bad year at the worst possible time. And good on Pistons ownership, Tom Gore, to say, you know what? I made a very expensive mistake. I'm not going to tether my new Pistons president with a $60 million coach that he may not want. I'll cut the check, and we can start fresh. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.